No, not lately. Well, look under the beds and in the closet. And if they're not there, we'll go to the basement and the garage. You think the horses would be in the middle of things when we unmask and still playing hide and go seek? Yeah, what's that? Oh, you better hurry or they'll find out we're gonna come after us. I cut the ignition wires on all the cars. Well, what if they should telephone ahead? I cut the phone wires, too. Oh, no, I'm beginning to get scared. Now, don't worry. Plain murder. Three knife wounds in his back. Better call the police, Lennox. Yes, sir. Come on, Come you, on, you all get better out. get out of here. You can't do any good. Oh, Let's go. Hello? Hello, is that you, Chief? Get this. Stephen Chester's been murdered. What? Take that piece of cabbage out of your mouth and talk so I can understand you. I said Stephen Chester's been murdered. I don't know. The phone wires were cut. Servants went over to neighbor's house to phone. Yeah. His granddaughter beat it away with a guest right after it happened. Yes, yes, we did. Send out a broadcast. It'll be picked up any minute now. This might be them coming out. Get your gun ready in case they get caught. Come on, move over, buddy. I'll drive. What's the idea? I was only doing 50. Oh, please, mister, let us go. We'll pay the fine. We're in a terrible hurry. Now, cut the comedy, sister. You're Gene Kester, aren't you? Oh, yes. Just as I thought. But you're going right back home. Come on, move over. What are you taking us there for? You know as well as I do. You're wanted for the murder of Stephen Kester. The list of the people who were at the party, they've all gone home now. I figured we'd have our hands full with the house guests and servants tonight. Say, if it wasn't that granddaughter of his or a sweetie, I'm a pelican. There are times when you resemble that noble bird more than you do a detective. Oh, so you got him, huh? Thanks a lot. Oh, Chance. Yes, sir. Take the two of them in there and see that they don't make another getaway. I'm going upstairs to the doctor, see if he's finished. Come on. After all, death isn't so terrible to the one it strikes. It's those who live on, safe and protected in body, but troubled in spirit who suffer. Don't you think? Uh, he was wearing this thing when we found him. He lives to be about 70 and then decides he wants to be a Chinaman. Who are you? Well, I paid $10 this morning to be a yodeler. What's your name? Tracy. Which Tracy? Michael Tracy. A novelist? Well, I'm not exactly a novelist. I write detective stories. Got a police record, haven't you? 
Yes, I've been arrested uh, seven or eight times. Four times for creating a disturbance while under the influence of alcohol. Three times for socking a cop on the nose and once, once for murder. I was exonerated from that, though. You see, I only commit murder with pen and ink. What are you doing here? Well, I'm a friend of Miss Kester's. I'm spending the weekend here. I've been doing a little sleuthing on the side since the murder, I suppose. Well, I've been keeping my eyes open. Well, we don't want anybody gumming things up, so don't figure to help us out. Well, I know a few things you might like to hear, but I'll try to keep them quiet. You'll get a chance to spill it when the time comes. He's been dead about three or four hours. Three wounds in the back from a double-edged knife. We've looked everywhere for that knife, but it just ain't here. Well, maybe the guy that did it's the sword swallow. I'm going to start throwing some questions. You stay here and let me know what the fingerprint men find. What's your connection here? Well, I'm, or rather I was, Mr. Kester's private secretary. Say, a guy who thinks up mystery stories could have thought up this one, too. Probably. However, the victim was suffering from angina pectoris. He would have died anyway before long if he hadn't been killed. Sure. I guess somebody got tired of waiting. Or maybe he was mixed up with a... Nah, he's too old for that. Where's the girl? Miss Kester was very upset. What with hearing about her grandfather and being hauled around like a common murderess, she went to her room with her maid. Miles watching her. All right, sit down, everybody. Take it easy. Supposing you tell me about the last time you saw Mr. Kester alive. I know all about how he was found. Well, Mr. Kester was having difficulty putting on the paper mache head, so I helped him. Then I came downstairs. Miss Kester had asked me to have the orchestra give her all of the drums at the end of the third dance as a signal for everyone to unmask. Did he come down and join the guests? Yes, sir. Where were you during the third dance? Well, I was standing at the foot of the stairs talking to Mr. Hall. Did you see Mr. Kester? Yes, I did. He went up the stairs about the beginning of the third dance. Was this gentleman with you? No, no, he joined me a minute or so later. And you were there all during the last dance? No, no, we watched the dancers for a few minutes and then I went upstairs. You followed Kester? No, I just went upstairs. And then what? I went to my room. What were you doing there? I, uh, I was smoking. Couldn't you smoke downstairs? Yes, I could, but it was noisy and I preferred the quiet. How long did you remain in your room? Until I heard the scream. That was a funny remark you made when you walked into the bedroom and saw Mr. Kester had been murdered. What did he say? Well, I'll be doggone. I don't know what Emily Post would have said, but it didn't sound like the proper remark to make on seeing a body. What did you mean by that? I don't exactly know. Just surprise, I guess. Were you a friend of Mr. Kester's? I knew him years ago in Mexico. He owned some mines and came to see them. How did you happen to be here tonight? I came to see him on business a few days ago, and he asked me to stay over the weekend. Where were you during the third dance? Sorry, I don't remember a thing. Oh, you don't, huh? No, I'm practically unconscious all the time. Drunk? But not the way you think. I was intoxicated with a beautiful gypsy girl. Had the slightest idea who she was, but we were getting along swell till some French marquee cut in on us. Well, then I wandered around looking for another partner. <laughs> Young man, I suppose you know that your actions tonight have been mighty suspicious. Are you accusing me of murder? I'm not accusing anybody. I'm simply trying to find out who had the motive and the opportunity to do it. Now, you come right down off your high horse and answer my question civilly. Now, where were you when it happened? Well, I can't very well say, because I don't know when it happened. Well, where were you during the third dance? I was out on the ground, smoking. By yourself? Yes, until I grew tired of smoking. Then I walked back to the veranda and met Miss Kester. She told me she had a headache and asked me to take her for a ride. Then we both got in her car. Did you have any trouble starting it? Yes. Someone had cut the distributor wires. I put them together again, and we left just as they were unmasking. You and the young lady you're engaged to don't seem to care much for dancing, do you? I don't know what you're talking about. I'm not engaged. I'm talking about Miss Kester, and you know it. Oh, 
I know. Everyone seems to think we're engaged. But as a matter of fact, we're just good friends. Well, that's all I'm going to ask you tonight. But I want to see all of you in the morning. Oh, Mr. Crawford. I don't think you'll find Miss Kester and Mr. Miller are murderers. There's something much worse. What do you mean, worse than murderers? They're neckers. Really, young people nowadays are something terrible. Young man, if you have anything valuable to offer to this investigation, I shall be glad to get it. Otherwise, don't butt in. Oh, but it is valuable. I suspect them of being in love. According to my own private computation, I've discovered them together 14 times lately. Seven times embracing, seven times fighting like cats and dogs. Therefore, they must be in love. Maybe they were trying to elope. I'll bet that's just what they were doing. Now, how did you happen to figure that out? Well, I got an inkling yesterday when I asked Jean to marry me. And she said she couldn't because she already had a date to elope with Mr. Miller this evening. Well, he'd better not ask me because I won't tell him anything. Oh, uh, this is Mrs. Pritchard, Mr. Crofton. How do you do? How do you do? Just what is it that you're not going to tell? Nothing that would interest you. Everything interests me. Mr. Kester was seen going up the stairs at the beginning of the third dance. After it was over, he was found murdered. Now, just what were you doing during that time? I was dancing. All the time? Come on, you might as well tell me. I'll find out sooner or later. Well, no, I wasn't. I mean... Uh, well, what do you mean? I mean that once during the dance, I did go upstairs for a minute. What for? It's too bad a lady can't go to her own room for Mrs. Pritchard, how long were you in your room? Only two or three minutes. Anyone upstairs at that time? I didn't see anyone. Notice anyone in Kester's room? No, the door was closed, I think. You're sure you didn't see anyone? I tell you, I didn't see anyone upstairs. I don't believe you. Do you mean to tell me I'm lying? Yes. <laughs> you saw someone upstairs, and you're going to tell me who it was. But I tell you, I didn't. I didn't. Don't lie. Because it'll only be all the harder for you. But I tell you... Who was it? All right. I'll tell. And you did see someone upstairs. What were they doing? Well, I... I opened the door to our room and started out. Then I remembered I'd forgotten to turn out the light in the bathroom, so I went back. And just as I stepped into the hall, I saw someone coming out of Mr. Kester's room. And who was it? Come on. It was Jean Kester. During the last dance before the unmasking, where were you? I was in my room. Why? I was tired and wanted to rest. How long did you remain in your room? Oh, during that dance. I had a little headache. I felt some fresh air would do me some good. So I went downstairs and asked one of the guests to take me for a ride. Mr. Miller's a pretty good friend of yours, isn't he? Oh, good enough. I understand you were engaged. Oh, yes. That's what everyone thinks. But there's not any truth in it. How come you took a notion to take a ride when you did? I should think, being hostess, that you would have stayed, just out of politeness. Should you? That's not answering my question. Well, then don't ask such absurd ones. If I felt like going for a ride instead of being polite, that's my affair. Maybe it was your affair, but it's mine now. Your grandfather was murdered, and it's my business to find out who did it. What were you doing in his room before you took the ride? I wasn't in his room tonight. You would swear to that? Of course I'd swear to it. You don't think that I killed him? No. But I think you know who did. Well, I don't. Can I go to her now? I want to ask you a few questions first. Where were you during most of the evening? I went upstairs when the dancing began, having gotten things started satisfactorily in the kitchen, and having toured Lennox, he's the butler, to look after the guests. That was my privilege to tell him. You know, I haven't been with the Kesters for 27 years, and him only 20. I went straight to Jean's room, started picking up, 
And I've been there ever since. Were you alone all that time? No, sir. Who was with you? Jean, for a short time. How long? Well, they'd been two dances. I could tell by the music. Jean came upstairs and said she was tired and wanted to rest a while. I said maybe a little fresh air would do her good. She said she'd hunt up Mr. Miller and ask him to take her for a ride. She went downstairs and I went on with my sword. When did Miss Kester leave her room? A few minutes before all the screaming and running around out there when they found the body. And then she went directly downstairs? Yes, sir. How do you know? I watched her. You mean your door was open? 